Hey there, internet friend. If you're watching this, congratulations. You've decided to start your online research train. Does that mean I can start doing my own research online? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on there, big wheels. Did you just boop me? Here at the facility, accuracy is all important. And have you seen it out there? It's a wasteland of misinformation. <laughs> yeah, it almost makes you want to go to the nearest cliff and just jump. Doing your own research. Science today allows humans to answer the universe's most complicated questions. Why are there stars in the sky? Why are there so many amazing creatures on Earth? How might the universe finally end? Why do people like Joe Rogan? But these answers don't just happen. It's not like science works by Facebook post, right? Right? Yes, right. Sorry. Jeez. So say you have a question that you want to answer using your electric internet machine. The first thing that you want to do are check for red flags. Red flags? Like when someone's emotional problems become their entire personality? That's right. Where will you be looking for for your information? Inside an institution where many people have spent the equivalent of many lifetimes dedicated to dispassionately discussing and dissecting the deviously difficult? <gasps> or a conspiracy theorist tomato who sells supplements? One of these is a big red flag. This isn't to say that large institutions can't be wrong and single weirdos can't be right, but the latter has much more incentive, often monetary, to be controversial and contrarian than the former. When in doubt, start with sources with obviously and preferably overwhelming expertise. Information that has to go through 10 people before it's published will be better than information that only goes through a single filter most of the time. Now let's go deeper. Once you've found a good source of information, you'll have to interpret the information that you find. And with scientific information, that often means reading a scientific paper. Scientific papers are the lifeblood of the scientific process. Now, to the average person, a scientific paper can be quite confusing. And of course they would be. These papers are not made for you. They are made by professional smart people trying to communicate with each other. But don't worry, there is a place even the average person huh. can start. Even me? <laughs> yes, even you, the least attractive Hemsworth. Just, just because it's true doesn't mean you have to say it to me every day. Reading a scientific paper. While it's true that the average person will have a hard time engaging with a scientific paper, there are ways to figure out what the paper is really saying. And then I'm ready to get on Twitter and yell at people about doing their own research online, right? Oh! Oh, hold on there, sports fan. Step one, where is the paper published? As we said, a Screaming Meatballs website won't be the best place for good information, and that's specifically because it won't have peer review. Peer review is a professional process where, before a paper is accepted by a scientific journal, relevant experts are asked to check it out. The reviewers look at the data, the methods, and the conclusions, suggest revisions, and then give the paper a go-ahead. Step one is to do your best to check that your paper has been peer-reviewed before proceeding onwards to the next steps. Ah! <laughs> I'm not sure this inflated Yosemite Sam even knows what peer review is. <laughs> Step two, read the abstract. Now, scientists are very smart people, but they can't know everything about everything, and they don't have the time to. That's why every scientific paper comes along with an abstract, or summary, of the paper's key questions and findings for other scientists and reviewers who may not be intimately familiar with the specifics of the work. Step two is to read the abstract yourself. The key point should be in the last few sentences. For example, this paper found that dung beetles can navigate at night using the light from the Milky Way. <laughs> well, how about that? Step three check for conflicts. Once we have a source of information and know generally what it says, we want to check one more time for red flags. If you scroll to the bottom of a good scientific paper, it will show any conflicts of interest for the study authors. A conflict of interest, like having a study paid for by a large industry, doesn't necessarily mean that the science is bad, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> Good thing this dung beetle study wasn't paid for by Big Poop. 
At this point, if your peer-reviewed, conflict-free abstract is written somewhat understandably, who is talking right now? You should feel pretty good about where doing your own research has gotten you. So we're done. I can do my own research online? Almost. But if you really want to be secure in the searching you've done, and you're slightly more savvy, there are a couple more checks you can do. <laughs> wow, it almost seems like what people say they do on social media is nothing like actually doing research. It's time for the lightning round. Is the sample size large enough? Is the sample representative? Are the experiments randomized? Are the experiments double-blinded? Is there a control group? Uh-oh. <gasps> what is it? It seems that we have an emergency situation. We've run across information from known misinformation peddlers. Hey, I know what to do. Depending on the platform, you should definitely report these people because words matter online and it leads to actual harm in daily life. Good work, Mr. Hill. Nicely done. Wait, you didn't get your PhD? Well, now you just sound like my dad. Final checks. So. We found a source of information, checked it the best we could, watched out for known bad actors, and we're in the best position to come to a conclusion after doing our own research. Yeah, now we can do one final check to see if the claim we were presented with or some headline was misinterpreted, just plain wrong, or sensationalized. That's right, Mr. Hill. Okay, but what if we go through all of this and we still have some kind of emergency situation? Well, that brings us to the last step. Interfacing on social media. After doing your own research, of course you need to go and talk about it on social media. If you don't, how would anyone know that your very existence has value? <laughs> if only there was another way to tell that. But what if people start calling you names? or a shill, or tell you that you are straight up wrong and then yell at you with characters. What should you do then, Mr. Hill? Uh, I should ruminate on those comments all day and let them affect my self-worth. Now, now, remember what we've learned. <laughs> right, if someone's mean to me on the internet, It's almost like those online interactions didn't actually matter. Well, at least we learned something. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today especially, I want to recognize research assistant Jess and visiting scholar Sky Kitsune Studios. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to see videos early, get behind the scenes photos, get monthly members only live streams with me and talk to me every day on Discord, yes, like that, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally over a thousand of you. So I have no idea how I'm gonna pass it to, yes, I did steal this entire episode idea from Spongebob. But if you're gonna rip off anything, Spongebob's not a bad place. Oh, and when you're on the internet, uh, in addition to looking out for bad actors and known misinformation peddlers, if anyone comes at you with the first, and the first thing that they say is, hey, you just made some kind of logical fallacy, that's a red flag. When the only thing someone knows is what a logical fallacy is and doesn't know how to use it, that means they didn't do their research. Trust me. Thank you.